Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the important concept of DNA methylation. This is a very high yield topic, something you need to know a lot about and you need to know in detail. So I highly recommend you spend your time with this video and understand these concepts because they will play an important role in your upcoming lectures and your exams. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us and it allows us to continue making these educational lectures completely free so that you can get more content content, more understanding of these topics without going deeper into debt. Okay, so now that we've done our self-promotion, we're going to talk about DNA. DNA is very important because it is our genetic code. Pretty straightforward. Essentially, DNA is located in the nuclei of eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, DNA is just present in the cytoplasm, but in DNA cells, because we have different organelles, the DNA is going to be located in the nucleus. Very important. Now, also remember that your mitochondria have DNA, which is called mitochondrial DNA. It is not in the nuclei, it is located in the mitochondria, but for today, we're not going to discuss that. We'll discuss that in upcoming subsequent lectures. DNA is essentially a polymer of nucleotides, and these right here are nucleotides in the bottom. Nucleotides are composed of three main components. Number one, you have the sugar backbone, which is a ribose-based sugar. This structure is very important because you need to understand the difference between these two components right here. Number one, this is the ribose-based sugar as well as this right here. Now you might be looking at the bottom text underneath these images. One it says ribonucleotide and one says deoxyribonucleotide. Ribonucleotides are found in RNA and deoxyribonucleotides are found in DNA. Why is that important? Because this tells you what type of structure the backbone of the genetic code will have. So DNA has a deoxyribose structure in its backbone. RNA has a ribonucleotide structure. And the key differentiating factors is that this carbon right here, carbon number two, in deoxyribose, there is no OH group. Whereas in the ribonucleotide or the RNA structure, there is an OH group in the uh, second carbon. Very, very important differentiating, key differentiating factor between the two. Okay. So the second thing you need to know about nucleotides is that it is a nitrogenous base. There is a nitrogenous base that is present. This nitrogenous base essentially allows the two backbone structures of DNA uh, molecules right here to essentially combine and bind to one another. These colorful things in this image right here are the nitrogenous bases that are able to bind to each other. We've discussed this in a previous lecture, so I highly recommend you check it out. But if this right here is the ribose backbone that we've already discussed about. These are the nitrogenous bases. And they are able to bind to each other. Okay, and then finally, in nucleotides, you have a phosphate group that is bound to the ribose sugar. In a nucleoside, very important key differentiating factor, there is no bound phosphate. How do we remember this? Essentially, the phosphate is on the side, okay, the side, the side, the phosphate is on the side of a nucleoside. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to dive right in now and we're going to start talking about the topic what we are, you know, discussing today, which is DNA methylation. DNA methylation is very important. It is a highly, highly important topic because it plays a very important role in our body. You see, DNA transcription and translation is a very conserved mechanism. Why is it very conserved? Because we cannot prevent, we cannot accept any errors. It has to be conserved. It has to be very consistent and it can, there cannot be deviations in this process. If there are deviations, they will lead to cancer. Therefore, DNA transcription translation is highly conserved because it is important for preventing cancer. You cannot change up your DNA because if there is changes, if there are changes occurring, it puts us at a higher risk of developing cancer. Now, we have many mechanisms that our body uses to keep these processes very conserved, okay? 
very, very uh, few mechanisms are effective and very few mechanisms are as important as DNA methylation. And methylation is just one of those mechanisms I'm talking about today. It allows for us to control DNA replication and it allows for us to continue to make sure DNA is conserved and the replication translation process is uh, also like is also consistent and not altered along the way. So what happens in this process is that in the DNA, you're going to get a methyl group, a CH3 molecule bind to the uh, the base itself. So remember, we talked about the bases, adenine, cytosine, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Those molecules will get a methyl group. Okay, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second. But what this is very important for are portions of your molecule or sorry, portions of your DNA called CPG islands. DNA methylation is highly, highly associated with CPG islands. This is where it usually occurs. Okay, so this is very high yield. This is a high yield AF topic. Okay, so do not forget this concept because it is a small topic, it is a small concept, something people often forget, but it can be easily tested and it is an easy point you can miss. So CPG islands, you might be wondering what are these CPG islands I keep talking about? Don't worry, I got you. CPG islands are part of our uh, of our DNA or portions of our DNA that have very high cytosine and guanine base pairing occurring. Okay, we're gonna slow down for a second so I can explain this. Essential, essentially, uh, cytosine and guanine are two of the four nitrogenous bases that you've already discussed that we've already talked about. So why are these two bases important? It's because cytosine and guanine have three bonds between the two of them. When they bind. Adenine and thymine, when they bind, there are only two bonds. That means that the binding or the bonds between cytosine and guanine are very strong, or at least they're stronger than the AT bonds. So when you have portions of your DNA that has high binding and has strong, uh, essentially, connections, you are creating a very stable part of that DNA. That portion of a DNA is very hard to break. Those portions are called CPG islands. And that's why we have methylation occurring at these locations. And now the methylation on the CPG islands can actually occur on both strands, not just one strand, but it'll occur on both strands. And this is what the methylation looks like. On the left, you have a normal cytosine molecule. Okay, this is the normal structure, but on the right, you have the methylated cytosine molecule. As you can see, this carbon right here that had a hydrogen atom attached to it now has a methyl group attached to it. And this is going to make the structure of the CG bond actually stronger, which we're, we're going to talk about right now. So DNA methylation is very important because of one reason. DNA methylation essentially inactivates DNA transcription. When you have high DNA methylation, you are going to have low DNA transcription. Very straightforward. They are inversely related. So this is very important because DNA methylation is thought to be one mechanism of epigenetics, where not only do our genes play a role in our development, but also the mechanisms of activating and deactivating genes. Those mechanisms are also very important. Now, majority of our DNA, believe it or not, is actually methylated. Normal human day DNA is actually 70 to 75% methylated. That's crazy, right? You would think you want your DNA to be unmethylated, but that's not the case. The reason why is because this is a defense mechanism. If our body detects unmethylated DNA, it's going to assume it is an infection. 
Okay, and we're talking not just a little bit of unmethylated DNA. Get it, you know, keep in mind that 20 to 25 percent of the DNA is unmethylated, and that 20 to 25 percent, given you know where it's occurring, is usually unmethylated because it's involved in the cellular processes. It's important because certain genes might be getting transcribed, and certain you know uh, processes or pathways might be getting activated at that point in time. But majority of your DNA is going to be unmethylated. If you have majority of your DNA unmethylated, that means you are going to essentially increase your immune reactivity because your body will think this is not my DNA. This is some sort of external DNA and we need to attack this. We can see this in certain disease concepts like cancer. When our body detects cancer and it has an automatic immune response to it, the reason why it's able to do that is because it is able to detect unmethylated, highly unmethylated DNA. Think about the process of cancer. Cancer wants to replicate over and over again. So when we have a cancer cell, we're going to have highly unmethylated DNA because that DNA is going to want to grow and then duplicate so that the cell can also replicate and split up, right? And essentially, the process continues nonstop until you get a cancerous growth. Well, our body, when it detects that abnormal process, that's not during the normal cell cycle phase, right? During the normal cell cycle, when we are replicating a cell, that is normal. Our body isn't going to attack the cell at that moment. But in an abnormal phase where it should not be replicating and our body detects highly unmethylated DNA, our own immune system will either induce apoptosis or kill the cell itself. Very, very important. Okay, So that's why DNA methylation is important. Now that's just one reason a cancer prevention. The second reason is that bacterial DNA is mainly unmethylated. That means that when you have bacterial infections, our body is able to recognize that it is unmethylated because our own normal human DNA is majority methylated. And that allows an additional immune response. Very, very important. Now, bacterial DNA can definitely be methylated, but majority of the DNA is usually unmethylated or it is able to be detected by our body as more unmethylated than normal human DNA. And this is just a, a one defense mechanism that we uh, that is present for bacteriophage viruses. Bacteriophage viruses actually want to go into the bacteria and they want to go ahead and replicate in the bacteria, those viruses do. But because the bacterial DNA is majority unmethylated, or it's mainly uh, unmethylated, they're able to do so in certain viruses, in certain bacteria. However, when you have DNA in bacteria that is methylated, they have developed this process because they want to protect themselves against these bacteriophage viruses. Those bacteriophage viruses cannot infect, or they cannot infect the um, uh, bacteria that have methylated DNA as well as they could with the other types of bacteria whose DNA is unmethylated. But for our purposes, for the human body, when we detect unmethylated DNA, our body doesn't really know if it is cancer or if it is bacteria. So we will just kill both. Why not? It's not worth it. Not worth figuring out. All right. So with that being said, that covers up essentially everything you need to know about DNA methylation. I hope this was helpful. I hope this explained a lot and was able to give you a good understanding of DNA methylation. Just a quick understanding. This, this main concept is the most important thing if you are going to take away one thing from this lecture. High methylation is going to lead to decrease in DNA transcription. So that means DNA will not become RNA and you will not get genes being transcribed or proteins being made. And this occurs in highly methylated DNA. Again, I hope this was helpful. If it was, leave a comment or let us know. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel and uh, following our account because your support means a lot to us. Again, it allows us to keep this lecture completely free. If you want to see more lectures like this, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find more additional content for your education and your exam prep needs all for free. Thank you.